Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on calculating Cohen's Kappa using Microsoft Excel. Cohen's Kappa is a statistic that evaluates inter-rater reliability, and it can be used with nominal and ordinal levels of measurement. So taking a look at these fictitious data on this worksheet, if we were to use SPSS to calculate Cohen's Kappa, we would enter it like I have here. You have a researcher and a research assistant, so you have two raters. And then you have these numerical values that can either be a zero or a one. So let's say that they're evaluating participants for inclusion in a study. And they can evaluate the participant as unsatisfactory represented here by a zero, or satisfactory, represented here by a one. And we want to get an idea of the inter-rater agreement, the level of inter-rater agreement, or inter-rater reliability, between the researcher and the research assistant in evaluating participants as either unsatisfactory or satisfactory to be in a study. So again, if we were using SPSS, we would enter these data as they're formatted here. But for Excel, we need to enter it as a habit over here to the left. So you can see I've positioned the researcher data in the column and the research assistant data in the row. And both possibilities of evaluating a participant are available for both the researcher and the research assistant. You have a zero for unsatisfactory and a one for satisfactory for both these raters. So this is a two by two table, so we have to populate these data in here. So what we do here is we look at the number of times that the researcher indicated unsatisfactory and the research assistant also indicated unsatisfactory. So if we look over at this table, which formatted for SPSS, we can see that that occurred five times. Five times that the research assistant and the researcher both found the participants to be unsatisfactory for the study. So you input five in that cell. Then looking at the other area where the two raters could have agreed, which would be down here, would be where the researcher found a participant satisfactory, and so did the research assistant. And you can see that that happens four times in this example, not here in, in this case, but four times down here. So we enter four. Then we look for where the researcher indicated not or unsatisfactory and the research assistant indicated satisfactory. So that'd be a zero for the researcher and a one for the research assistant. And you can see that does not happen in these data. That's not observed. And then the last value we need to populate here would be where the researcher found the participant satisfactory, but the researcher assistant indicated they were unsatisfactory. Like I said, it happened one time. Researcher satisfactory, research assistant unsatisfactory. So we input a one in that cell. Once we have these data inputted, then we need to make additional calculations. So first for the row, starting with the first row, research assistant, we're simply adding the 5 and the 1. And that's what that formula I have in there does. It's just 5 plus 1. Similarly, I arrive to 4 by adding 4 plus 0 in the row. Down here I add the columns, so that's 5, 1 plus 4, and 5, 5 plus 0. And then for this case I add the column but you could also add the row here. It's the same value, 6 plus 4, 
or 5 plus 5 equals 10. So moving out one more column and down one more row, I'll show you how I calculated these percentages. This is 6 divided by 10. That's how I arrive at the 60%. And the 40% is 4 divided by 10. And similarly for this additional row, the 50% is 5 divided by 10. And the other 50% is 5 divided by 10. So once you have all these data inputted and calculated, you can calculate Cohen's kappa. So before I get to the calculation uh, formula for kappa, it's important to understand that what kappa does is accounts for the probability of agreement based on just chance. So the researcher and the research assistant are going to have some agreement based on chance alone. So the way we calculate kappa is to look at the relative observed agreement, then subtract the probability of agreement based on chance, and divide that by 1 minus the probability of agreement just based on chance. So let's calculate the two components that we'll need to finish the calculation for kappa the relative observed agreement and the probability of agreement based on chance. So you can see I have the relative observed agreement as 0.9 or 90 percent and that's calculated or equal sign here that's calculated by taking the agreement in this case of the unsatisfactory and adding the agreement for satisfactory so 5 plus 4 and then dividing by the total. You can see I arrive at 0.9. To calculate the probability of agreement based on chance, it's a different formula. It's going to be these two percentages multiplied together, and then these two percentages multiplied together, and it'll be the the sum of both of those. So it's the sum of this value, 50%, times the 60%, plus the 50% multiplied by the 40%. You see we have 50%. So if I want to reformat that to look like the 0.9, just go here to general. Either way, it's still 90%, 50%, which just represents 0.9 and 0.5. Then we can calculate the value for kappa, and we'll just follow the formula here. So the equal sign, open parentheses, and in this case will be the 0.9 minus the 0.5 and that'll be divided by 1 minus the 0.5. And you see that comes out to 0.8, the same value I have here as the value for kappa. So there are several interpretations for what the kappa value actually means in terms of inter-rater reliability. One popular model indicates that any value above 0.5 is moderate agreement between the raters. And any value above 0.7 is good and above 0.8 is excellent. So this is exactly at 0.8 so you could argue this is uh, excellent inter-rater agreement or inter-rater reliability between the researcher and the research assistant. Two other constructs we're oftentimes interested in 
when discussing integrated reliability are sensitivity and specificity. So using this as an example, sensitivity would be the percent that were found to be satisfactory that were in fact satisfactory, and specificity would be the percent that were unsatisfactory and were found to be unsatisfactory. So to calculate sensitivity here, we would look at this value where you have the satisfactory for the researcher and the satisfactory for the research assistant, that's four, and the total is five. So the sensitivity would be four divided by five, or 80%. The specificity, we would look at where the researcher found unsatisfactory and the research assistant found unsatisfactory. You can see that's five, and the total is five. So the specificity in this example, five divided by five, would be 100%. I hope you found this video on calculating and interpreting Cohen's Kappa to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.